Hey, what's up guys? Last time we were here at this build, we finished the exterior and now it is time to wrap up this job with the ceiling. So this client is going to probably do the interior later, at a, you know, by himself at a later date, or he may call us back, I don't know, but I really was like, dude, we should probably do the ceiling first before you get in here, start lining the walls with stuff, putting lights in. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and get this thing going. We gotta do some minor framing for this. We've got some details that I think are special to post frame, pole barn, whatever, and uh, we'll share them with you guys, so let's go. I feel like you're the, you're the best at doing this wire. Yeah. What, well, you don't want to do it? What are you going to do? I'm going to go up there and start drilling holes. Okay. Can leave I do that? Leave me in the dust. Now. I'm not leaving you in the dust. I've given you a very important task, dude. All right. What do I need my hammer for? Right here, dude. I've got two of them. Well, where's my belt at, though, seriously? <laughs> I was too excited to get going. I forgot my tool belt. Um, we probably better go get that. Yeah. All right, let's go get that tool belt. I don't like Greg being right, but he's right. I thought maybe, you know, after spending a little bit of time by yourself working here, you've, you just come undone. Greg. Let me go ahead and put that back up for you since I'm gonna be down here. So this is what we call our Tyvek wire. I don't know if that's trademarked. I don't know if we can call it Tyvek wire, Greg, because Tyvek's kind of trademarked but it's going to support our air deflectors. Are you gonna, yeah, yeah. So we gotta get the dimension to the length of the building because it is going to run the length of the building and you'll see exactly how we utilize this. Are you good? All right, so what we've gotta do is drill and place bolts top and bottom of our truss. That is for structure What's up? 30 inches? 30 inches? Yeah. I mean, that's gonna be... I mean, typically, I'll go like 24. Yeah, 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 sure. Oh, 23. Yeah, just, just go right in the middle of this gusset plate. Just go right in the middle of this gusset plate. Yep. And then what we need to do is drill and place a wire all the way through, which is what Greg's doing. We need a new bit. That's awful. Man, a lot of complaining going on. Um, and this is all so that when we put a ceiling in and you go to insulate, we want to get a good R38 insulation all the way out to this outside wall, but we don't want blown in insulation going into our soffit. So we're making our own custom attic air deflector. It's pretty sweet. I mean, as far as attic air deflectors go. So I'm just running this the length of the building and then we'll cut it to fit as we uh, install them. I need a little roller. Yeah, I can smell that burn in the wood, Greg. It's not, good not good at all? Mm -mm. Sorry, man. Oh boy. Kyle. There's an anvil on this, Greg. You yell I didn't. At me 10 times out of 10, then never do that because you hate pulling off the. Actually, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you complain about that, dude. All right, you got to, we got to go down. Got to get it. You always tell me, don't do that. I can't get the socket off. You're lucky I like you. <laughs> And we have a ceiling to install, and I definitely need you. <laughs> Greg. Greg. Yeah. Oh, buddy, you got so much room down there, you and all your friends could fit down there. See, now look at this. Watch this. Now, it won't come off so easy, but look. Go ahead, try and get it off. Yeah, I know. You always yelled at me for that. No, that's not true. Like, I was having a bad day that day, Greg. So look at this is this is what's great. We've got these all nailed, but these uh these bolts. 
We just suck those things right together. Yeah. All right. Good. What's wrong? You can't reach it? Here, Greg. Wait, 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 wait. Both of us. Opposite. Come on. No, you, got, you got to be with me, man. Be part of the team. My team is <laughs> okay, there you go. Stick it in the hole. I'm having trouble. I know, but it's, it's literally the only hole there. You don't even have to guess. No, there's actually there's the second one. Oh. <laughs> the one you started. That's, yeah, that's not the right one. All right. Watch your head, dude. Pretty fun, isn't it? So much fun. What's wrong? You're in the right mode, right? Let's go to drill. Yeah, try that. And just put your back into it. You can do it. See? Just think of the man you're becoming, Greg. So I got a little tip for you. We're laying out this wire and we're trying to make it nice and taut. So what we're gonna do is take a nail. I'm gonna pound it in, not all the way. Then I'm gonna start my wrap around. Okay, now when I come in and nail that nail tight, it's gonna tighten that wire up. That's really hard to do just by hand tightening, so hope that tip helped you guys. You know, when you uh, have to run a wire up in a truss like that. Now what we'll do is we'll go through and we're gonna take these, and this is how we're gonna make our attic air deflector. We're gonna take this, extra scrap house wrap, we're gonna put it over top of our wire, what the? There we go. We're gonna staple it. We're gonna take it around and staple it. Greg, you, you're probably the best at this, man. Okay, so once we have this done, we're gonna take our other stapler. We're just gonna kinda keep this nice and taut. Maybe do a little bit of a roll. Okay, and now what this has done, essentially, I think it's pretty self-evident. I'm out of staples, of course, is this can get blown in. So insulation can get filled all the way out here, all the way out at the uh, eave, but we've got air that's gonna come out of our soffits and make its way up into the ridge vent. So um, I don't think it's too bad. It's a pretty easy process. And I think in the end, it's gonna make a, per, a building perform at a much higher rate, having this good attic air deflector allowing air up to our ridge. Greg, you got staples, big dog? All right, so that's the, uh, that's our attic air deflector. Now the next step that we've got to do here in preparation for sealing is framing. We got to get a frame board around this whole thing that's gonna mount our trim and that's where our ceiling will die to. You need nails, Greg? Yeah. That 
that way. Uh, one second. Yep, right there. Sixteen and a half inch. Nah, sixteenth and a quarter. Is that gonna be all right, man? So on our end wall, this is where the steel is going to die into this end. We need a place to screw because there's nothing here. Otherwise, you know, throughout the building, we have the trusses to screw, but there's nothing over here. So we always cap our end um, frame with a two by four uh, for that purpose alone. Okay. Dude, I just ripped that whole board down in the time it took for you to get those two boards. Are you happy? Hey, tell me how proud of. Tell me how proud of. Uh, proud of you, I am. I am. You are. What? Of me, you are. Who's proud of who? I'm proud of you. You disappointed in me? I think I was thinking that meters were five feet, but they're only three feet. Okay, two hundred one and three eighths. I'm American and I use Imperial. So it's not, not that I chose it, it's what I was given. All right, that, uh, that is all the framing and prep work that we have to do for the ceiling, I guess, before the metal arrives. So we're not, we are waiting for the metal. I think we're gonna get it maybe today or tomorrow. And, uh, and then we'll move into the in actual installation of the steel. So let's just keep this running and move right into it. All right, we are going to start the ceiling. Greg's got this plastic ran. He got here a little before me. I had some business to do. And now we have to do the hard work, which is probably you're glad I showed up for this. I thought you'd have this all loaded up by now. I tried. <laughs> so now we've got to get all this steel in the lift because we should be able to fit almost this entire ceiling. It's 2,500 pounds of steel. This lift is rated for 2,000, but we all know that machinery is never rated to its max. That's just That's the suggested yeah. safe operating capacity. And we will get the weight off real quick. So we're going to load this all up. We've got our pattern figured out. Why don't you give me one, Greg, so I can get it started because so what? Is our pattern no, our no, actually it's here. 16s. 16s. 16s yep. Is short? Yep, it's a short bay end. So we're good. So. Well, we're not loading up to the last row, right? Or are we going to try to put 2400 pounds up here? Yeah, we probably shouldn't do that, dude. Let's leave the last row off. Let's do the right thing. Okay. So, so, five, so we'll start with that. Two in the, the three or the two? Three of those. Okay. Yep. Yeah, give me one though, because if you look up here in the lift, I've got framing on the ground to prevent this from getting damaged. So we need to get this lined up perfectly. So those two buys, the goal is for them to sit in the flat of my metal. And that's my, it's right there. So now what we can do is we can walk on this and we're not gonna do any damage. So I'm just gonna make sure that these are all the way out to the edge to prevent any damage. Yeah, good enough. All right, Greg, I'll take two now. And now we're just gonna, we're gonna load this whole lift up with all of our steel minus the last row in the order that we will be, the opposite order that we will be using it. You're going right at two. Ah. I thought you were saying like nothing like waking up. You're good. So 
The reason we had to do that is we've got a good rib. This is the rib that laps over the siphon rib. We gotta make sure that it's all stacked up because this good rib here on the ground, we got the sheet underneath or upside down. When we lift it straight to the ceiling, we need that good rib going this way. So, um, and the control box is up there, which I control the control box, not because I'm, it's just, it makes it easier to line up with the trusses, whatever. It's a method to a madness. So now we can go ahead and get this done. All right, Greg, three at a time, huh? Don't you think? Yeah. So if you, you haven't already noticed, we've got kind of a couple different piles. It's because we do a staggered ceiling and that staggered ceiling was what, in my opinion, gives our ceilings probably some of the best looking ceilings around. Um, that stagger takes away the visual of having a seamed ceiling or it reduces that visual. So um, the problem with the stagger is you gotta have like a pattern. All right, go oh, three more. But that was a whole row? Yeah, that's one whole row. Okay. Right there. Um, yeah, I, I'm talking, thinking, so you're right. Either we load up the shorties or we load up nine. I don't think we load up the shorties. No, nope. let's just do these. So what I was saying is we've got, this pile is our intermediate panels. Those are the ones that span two full bays. These ones that Greg just loaded up for me are the short longs that go into the wall where we are a little bit less than 16 feet. So unfortunately, that's just the way it is. But in case you're curious, that is what we're doing. We're running a pattern. All right, so we need nine of these, three. You're the one with the fingernail, man. No way you just grabbed it like that with those fingernails. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like taking the nubby tips of my fingers, trying to... You go first, you go first, okay. Tr trying to grab the metal, and you're just like, click. <laughs> okay, new row, no shorties. So those will be shorts with that row. Yeah, I just, I'm confused right now, dude. I think I'm just confused, but I think you're right. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter. We just need one more here, six longs, three more shorts, and then. You need another set of nine. I thought you only have eight over there. I do. Right, right. Okay, I got, I got one. I think. I don't know. I'm leaving off the last three, five rows. <sighs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. No, no, don't use that yet. We're gonna put that on the top so it goes into the wall. Okay. So come on up here. Let's load up five. Five of these bad boys. Then we'll take your guy down there and uh, that should be good. You know, this wasn't too confusing. Wanna just pick all five of them up? It, yeah, it's actually the last five, yep. Yeah. So now. Uh, That's it. That's... No, I need, I need three. Oh yeah, 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 short, short. Long. Short longs, long shorts. Yeah. Hey, if you guys hear some background noise, um, gutter guy putting on gutters. Scotty, he's been doing our gutters for I mean, really, since we've been doing, well, we used to do our own gutters, which I didn't really enjoy. And- uh, 2015? Ah, uh, maybe, yeah. 14, 13, 12, I don't know. Sometime, long time. He's been doing them a long time. AR Gutter Services, Northern Illinois, if you need some gutters. Uh, Whoo! And this is just the start of the workout, dude. We get to do every piece up to the ceiling now. So, I think we're ready. All right, now the test is, I think we'll be fine, but that's a lot of steel sitting in the mega deck. This is reason five, why the mega deck is amazing, because doing a ceiling, the 60 by 64 ceiling, we probably could put it all up here, but I don't wanna risk loading it all up, being overweight and not pushing it, because there's been times, Greg, remember we had to climb the wall because there was too many of us in the lift with the material. Yeah. So we had to just give it a little bit of start, but all right, buddy, let's get out of here and start running the ceiling. Oh, we do have the cameraman now. It's added weight. Oh, no problem. All 
right, buddy, let's get to it. What we've got is the coil, coil gun. It's like a roofing gun. We always use it for trims, you know? Puts a nice fat shingle nail in and it's great for doing steel ceilings because I have to, I have to fasten this first one, but it's gonna get overlapped so we don't want a screw. Here we go, Greg. First one, Greg already snapped a line on the truss. So if you look up at the truss kind of where this edge is, you in? Yep. See this, see that line? So that line is what I'm gonna line up my steel to. And then I'm gonna take my shingle nail. And boom, put that in. And then the next sheet's gonna overlap this so you won't even see that. You're good, buddy. What do you want, what do you want me to do? Well, I'm just making sure that flat. Oh, and then, okay. Oh yeah, dude, I love putting steel ceiling on. At least it's not black, you know? That's true. So we can see what we're doing. Yeah, you usually have to wear night vision goggles. Key to keeping a perfectly straight ceiling, or at least trying to, is all in the lap. It's all right here, keeping that right where we want it which through a lot of experience, this, I line up with that. You're, you're good, you're good, buddy. That hurt. What hurt? Your guns were shot like uh, on the wires. Oh. Well, I need to put my hearing protection in. And then I'm just eyeballing this middle and it usually looks pretty good from the ground. <laughs> People are probably gonna say, why don't you punch your steel? Two reasons. One, because if there's any imperfection, you're screwed, man. You've got an inch and a half to hit. Greg, that's two, thank you. Um, two, most importantly, if we punch this and we stack this, it will get scratches everywhere. So we just don't, we don't have the ability to, uh, to stack ceiling. It is what it is. Punch steel. Oh yeah, sorry, we, we stack it so we can't punch it. So make sure I'm lined up. All right, that is three sheets. We call that kind of a bay. And we're gonna go three wide all the way down and then we're gonna come back and we'll start our stagger. Wait, so. wait, 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 wait. Oh. Greg, almost, uh, what are you gonna go? Seven, four is it or what is it? Three, well. What are you all the way? All the way? It should be minus eight inches. It's like 40 inches, right? Yeah, so 44. 40, 44. Yeah, go 44. And then I'm going four. And what this is, is the stitcher screw that holds the center of the sheet up. Just so when the weight of the fiberglass goes in, it doesn't open it up at all. Um, I don't know that it would, because we definitely missed a lot of screws over our days probably. And it's never been an issue. Okay. Okay, so now these are our intermediate sheets. So these go back to the longs. These are the ones that were up on that telehandler. So maybe it's starting to make sense why we've got staggered sheets. Okay, come on. I gotta go right there. I'm good, I'm good. complain a couple times, I guarantee you. <laughs> I'm saying with shoulders like yours, Greg, you were built for this job. So this snap line that Greg did early that we're lining this edge up, that is the only um, indicator to where our steel goes other than just the experience that we've done this now probably 100 plus times. And we kind of know the ins and outs of how the steel lies. So as long as I do my job on this, literally I take 100% responsibility for any messed up ceiling as far as straightness goes. Oh crap. Because it all kind of falls on the shoulder of the guy lining this end of the steel up right here. Sorry, Greg, I'm sweating hard. But 
they're so easy, you know? Yeah, you just kind of, you just put your head down and just work for a little while and you're like, oh. Oh yeah, no, that's true. You do keep your head up. Hashtag blessed, hashtag brothers, hashtag homies. All right, we got, I mean, our, our thought was we'd get half by lunch. We didn't even start till 11 o'clock, so, well, we didn't start steel, right? Yeah. So that's an hour, a little over an hour, hour and a half steel. Yeah, hour and a half steel, hour and eight. Not bad, take a little, take a little siesta break. Uh-oh, where'd the Band-Aid go? And then we'll get back at it, dude. Ugh. I don't know where it's at. So let's get into that. <laughs> All right, man. I believe you. That's all I'm doing. Okay. So this row here is a stagger row. And what I mean by that is we've been putting up basically 16 footers. And now we're gonna be installing, well, it's only a seven foot five and a half, but it's basically a single bay. And the reason we do this is because every time we run down the whole length of the building, we alternate it and stagger on an eight foot. That way we don't get one line going across every 16 feet, we get a staggered effect. And not only I think is it aesthetically pleasing, but the biggest thing is it helps straighten out the sheets. Cause if you think about it, here, hold that big dog. If you've got two sheets that are extremely out of line, when you go to run a full one across that joint, it's actually going to kind of self straighten out by a little overlapping a little bit on the joint and underlapping. Does that make sense? How about I draw oh, this yeah, yeah, picture? I think you need a visual. Look at this. If we've got two sheets of steel and they're going at an extreme angle, that's pretty extreme, pretty okay? Extreme. That would be really bad if you get that bad. When we come through here and we run another piece, right, it will help straighten this out. Otherwise, you will compound this if we just kept running pieces on the same joint all the way down, you might get a really bad V effect when you get to the other end of the wall. So, you know, we're never gonna be that extreme. We're talking about if we're off an eighth of an inch or so. Maybe. Maybe, maybe even. Um, so that is what the stagger's for. Do what you want with it. I still see people doing it straight. And if it works for you, great. But for us, we found that by staggering our steel, we get the straightest ceiling. And we always know when we get to the very end, and we're cutting our last piece all within quarter inch of each other. Yeah. That's kind of our goal. Also in this spot right here where we're working, whoa buddy, we've got, we've got our attic access right above us. So when we get this row run, we'll show you what we do with the attic access. Ouch. Now usually the only reason that our steel gets off is because these shorties they actually sometimes can move a little bit more than the 16 footers. Why, I don't know. Um, so usually this is where our problem starts is on a short row like this. When we go to the next row, up on the wall is either pushed ahead or back. And that's, that's on you, Greg. I don't know what I can do about that, you know? Or is it on me? Oh! Oh! Nope, I got it. We're good. It's just a chunk of metal. I could put, you know, glasses on. All right, so we're gonna install this ceiling opening up here in the attic. Now that we've ran the steel through where it's going to go, and Greg made this beautiful box, Greg. It looks great, man. All right, go ahead. I got it. Look at that. And what we need to do is make sure that it lines up centered in our rib spacing. So let's just go off that minor, Greg. Like right in the middle of the minor. What are you talking about? I'm just going to center on that rib. Um, so it's like the flats is kind of... Yeah, I'm just going to follow your rib. We just want to make sure that it looks um, presentable when we go to cut it out underneath, put some trims on. We don't want it all kitty wampus. So I'm good, Greg. Official? Yeah, official kitty wampus. And then I'm going to... I'm good, too. Yeah, I'm good. You made this easy, Greg. Good enough. This is not 
much other than just a nice opening. So what we're gonna do now is when Greg's done there, there Greg, you get your punch or no? Uh, I don't know, actually. Actually, your punch is in the lift, isn't it? I think so. I got mine. Yeah, we're just gonna take a punch and we're gonna go ahead and put um, little holes off the corners of this box about half inch, three quarters. So when we get done and we gotta cut this open, we know exactly where to cut it to. And we need to make sure we don't cut it exactly to the box because we need a lip to set our, which we need to bring some plywood mm -hmm. to set a box on the top. Ooh, how's that? All right, so we've gotta run plastic because uh, we're to the limit of where Greg ran plastic this morning, which by the way, nice job, dude. I know it didn't look great. It did and not look great. I know they're all run. like, dude. It didn't run great either. Greg said the plastic was irregular. Faulty. Would you say that, um, that it was like, the manuf- It was like a blow torch through like the center of it, and like the ends were, were sagging. Okay, like, so- So it was like tight in the middle and then loose on the end. We're gonna see if Greg is right or not. But uh, the tip I wanted to share real quick is when you're putting up plastic, especially on eight foot centers, um, if you just staple it, it will probably tear on you. So what we're going to do is just take spare cardboard off the box. I got a brand new blade in mine if you want it. Bro, what's wrong with my blade? Here. I'm worried about cutting my finger. And we're gonna, oh my God. Greg, your blade is, that is pretty nice, man. So we're gonna take all these little strips of cardboard and use them to secure our plastic. Otherwise, just straight staples doesn't do it. Here, I'm gonna give you these nice ones. Since that blade didn't make it all the way through, I'm gonna have to double this up, man. You know, some of you might be thinking, well, why don't you just use like a cap staple or something? And my answer to that is that this is like free garbage. So it comes in the box, comes with this, plastic and the staples are super cheap and easy. I don't have to have a cap stapler up here, whether that be pneumatic or one of those big heavy hand cap staplers. So the other thing is this big piece of cardboard, it will compress pretty decently and being a little bit larger than just a cap staple, I find that when you put a cap staple underneath metal, a lot of times if the light is shining a proper way or an unfortunate way, you can see you can see that cap staple, like it'll show up, you'll see it through the metal. So we call that ghosting, we don't want it. And cardboard seems to work pretty decent. Let's get some plastic up, man. I wanna see how this plastic runs since it's been garbage for you all morning. This, no, this one looks like a good <laughs> Oh, I love running plastic when it's like really hot out and you can kind of get up into it, you know, and just become one with the plastic. Okay, man, I wanna do whatever you've been doing, you know? So look at that. Boom, tears right off. It's uh, kind of junky if you just use a staple, but you see this cardboard Greg was using. We just take a piece of cardboard, give ourselves a nice little overlap. And since he's already got cardboard there, I'm just gonna move over a little bit. Rip it off. And now that's like acts as a washer. So it's gonna do a pretty decent job. Have you complained about your shoulders yet? Yeah, I can't count that as a new complaint. It's that's not, it's not a new complaint. No, that's pretty standard. I gotta like... Just get it started, my guy. Get it in there. All right. I mean, it's not perfect, Greg. But if you were by yourself doing that plastic, I would totally. No, this plastic is easy. It's better, way better than that stuff. Way better. Like, I hope the next roll is. You hope? Bad stuff, yeah. You know, I think Greg just having you pull and be able to see where you're pulling makes a big difference. I, I know you're saying it's the plastic, but I just think it's okay if you admit that it's easier when I'm here, you know? Because I would say like I it would did, be easier I, if, if you were here and I wasn't by myself, you I know? I never denied that it wasn't, like, that it just, But you said it was all the plastic. I think you but, should admit that it's probably just. No, 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 no. This plastic is good. I, 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 just uh, back on up, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> 
We're on the home stretch. We got a couple more rows left. I got a football game to go to for my son, so we're trying to get this done pretty quick. Looking good, though. You can really see the stagger when you look over there. Maybe, maybe not. See, now we are going, now we're going over that lap. And if you look at this, this is actually a great example of being off just ever so slightly. When I make this, when I put this rib up and I try to go tight, you see how it's, it's just a, a little bit this way. Like I want it more like over here because that is just ever so slightly off. That means that this is, this joint is ahead just, we're talking about a 16th of an inch. And by doing this stagger right here, it's going to run straight through that joint and hopefully re-straighten it back out. So it's a good example and a reason we like to do that. Hey, 44, Greg, come on. 44, Greg. Now, one of the things I do when you see me like kind of flattening out the steel, if I don't do that, the, and honestly, this is not even great. It's ideal when this is supported up here when you're installing it because it takes away some of the, uh, potential issues that can arise. And when I say issues, I mean like oil can. So you can imagine if you're, if you're screwing the metal and it's not perfectly flat, it can, uh, it can get a little wavy, but we, remember Greg back in the day when we had all them problems? Yeah, that was mainly steel though. That was because it was a really crappy liner steel. This liner panel is actually the same as the metal that goes on our exterior. So uh, they just take away the warranty and reduce the price because it's inside. There's not a, a problem with, um, you know, paint finish. Besides, we found out that the steel expires next year. Not oh yeah, the expiration date said uh, June something of 24. So that's true. Is that straight, Greg, or am I getting a glare down there? No, it's, it's good, I think. Look kind of glary. What your 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 knife decided to stop working today? I, I thought you were gonna stop working. Whole thing, dude. All right, let's finish up this steel, dude. Plastic ran. Let's throw that in a landfill. We don't need it. I'm joking. We're gonna recycle it in the bottom of the landfill. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, we're so close. I can almost see my son's football game, Greg. Nice work, Greg. Nice. So Greg just ripped down the last piece. Um, I got this first one installed in the corner, but I kind of need help to get the next ones. And we did a decent job on this ceiling. Our last measurement here was 19 and a half. This is 19 and 3 eighths. That one down there is 19 and 5 eighths. But that far corner is 19 and an eighth. So Greg and I already knew when we, had, when we installed this, our end trusses we're a little bit shorter than our intermediates. Not sure why, uh, that's just the way it worked. And I guess it kind of ended up being the exact same when we did our ceiling because our ends were shorter by just about a little bit than the rest of the wall. But uh, not bad, Greg. I think this is one of the straighter ones. Yeah. Because I don't think that's us. I think that was the... That's a truss. Yeah, I mean, we can't grow a truss. I mean, we could have done something maybe. I don't think so. Maybe we could have. What is what if we could have done something? Do you feel bad about that? Last piece. Come on. I gotta go. Kyle! <laughs> Heck yeah, dude.
Dang, we did it. There we go, Greg. Put another ceiling on our belt. I love the way a ceiling looks, man. It just cleans up the space, uh, makes it feel, in my opinion, bigger, even though you're dropping the ceiling. Um, unfortunately, we're not gonna be doing the entire interior on this build because this is all the client wanted. They might finish this later on. Um, on their own time or with us. We're not really sure, but I hope you guys enjoyed this build, man. I think it was a kind of nice back to the basics, simple, just fun build for Greg and I since we were on a string of really complicated structures and felt good to get one in just easy. Yeah. Not a whole lot of thinking involved, not a whole lot of problems, but we've got more coming. We've got some, we've got some really cool projects actually on the way. And in fact, I just today closed on property for my own shop. So we're gonna be building a new shop are our headquarters. Okay, that sounds... I don't know. It sounds, uh... We'll come up with something. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know the exact size. I know what my constrictions are because of zoning, but uh, I hope you guys follow along maybe with that process because I'm definitely, we'll do more in depth since it's not so personal for other people that I don't want to talk about, you know? So I might be able to drop some things like pricing and more kind of behind the scenes information. So if you guys are curious about something in specific, Something in, in particular, I, I lost my words there. Long day, I'm actually in a big hurry, gotta get to my son's football game. But uh, if there's something specific that you wanna know, drop that down below in the comments and I'll try to work that into that content when the time comes. So uh, I love it. We're basically done here, that's it for us. We're at cleanup mode, haul the machinery to the next job site. So I'll catch you guys on the next video. All right, so one thing that we've also got to do once the ceiling is done is we don't have to, I think it's the right thing to do, is you've got this garage door header that's kind of ugly. And if the customer goes to install a garage door without actually doing all the interior first, he's never really gonna have a good opportunity to finish this later. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of it. We're gonna lay out some flat stock and make it look good. And then we've got one other detail, which is the attic access. Cause I know everybody's asking, how do you get into the attic? We'll do that here in two seconds. So we got a 25 foot roll of 29 gauge metal. So be careful, Greg. Now, do we want to try to get it in or not yet? We'll wait. Uh, let's roll it out a little bit and then we'll like shift yours up, put a screw in it to hold it. And then we'll about the... I'm saying, do we want to get it into the bottom trim? No, 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 we'll do that. Yeah, now. okay. This is a delicate process. The bigger the door is, the more difficult this is. I think, Greg, I could probably go ahead and run a screw. If you can run a screw, it's gonna be I'm gonna 25 go. feet total, so just go for six Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, so we're gonna do the screw so it can be removed later. Uh, hey, buddy, what are you doing? Okay, now my job is to kind of keep it nice and taut while Greg runs this out to the end, which we'll have to move the lift a little because it's so big. But this is this will go good, we'll be fine. Yeah. Don't slap yourself. There you go. Yeah, we can always stretch it back. So Greg's just gonna throw a shingle nail in just to hold it, mainly because we forgot a screw gun. <laughs> yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Something just changed when you did that. Go down a little. Right there? Sure, yeah. It's a big piece of flat metal, so that's it. Mm. Go grab that screw gun and let's let's uh let's get a screw here in the middle. That's about as tight as I can go. Would you say that's middle? You're gonna be yeah, you're pretty close. One, two, three, four. This right here is middle. Look at the yeah. No, next one over is middle. Okay, so that gets this looking real nice, but we gotta do a lit wait, do you finish this? Why would you do that? No, You're not stupid, dude. It's just been a while. Gee. You're a rookie in a vet, dude. It's gonna be a, rookie. a rookie day. It's pretty hot out. Hot, tired. You get another screw for me? Yeah. Now the thing is with a screw, what we can do is we can use that hole. Oh, what do you think, right there? Right there, I think. But what we can do is put it on a slight angle and get a nice stretch. A 
look at that. That's a 24 foot piece of metal and it looks nice and flat. It's not all wavy and oil can. So now what we got to do is tuck it. Oh, there's one nail in that, this end. Yep, oh. here. We got to tuck it underneath our door trim now. We've got one nail here. Okay. I always wonder though, why do we do this? Why do we do, do what? Why do we tuck it? Uh, it looks better. I agree. I'm just making sure you remembered. There we go. Fingers grow back, dude. Hold up. This is the hardest part, is just getting it all back up without coming back out. I'm gonna go ahead and run a nail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is why we never finish our trims on the door jam, which I don't know if you guys saw that before, but now that we're done, we can do this and then the door will close nice and tight to the door seals right around this trim. Cool, and that's the door header. You guys remember those holes we popped through? Those are right here, so now we can see exactly where we want to uh, cut out for the attic access. I'm just using a nice piece of straight trim. Okay. And Greg, where's your drill at? Let's pull these screws. Um, let's see, this one right here, this one right here. That's the one I need. We're just gonna eyeball this. That's the burn of the elbow and the forearm. Come on, get through there. Okay, now we gotta put some J channel around the opening to hold the box. It should be like 22 and a half. 22 and a quarter, Greg, is good. So we want an inch, so 22 and a quarter, 24 and a quarter. What do you make the box at, Greg? Uh, 24 wide by 30 deep. 24 by 30. Let's make these guys a little bit tabled. It is cooler back here than by that door. This one should be whatever this is. There we go, attic access. Now that can be insulated at any time, but uh, that's it for us. Yeah. We're officially done. <laughs>